join us at Women of Courage and celebrate the achievements of women. show is being broadcast by the women and children's restoration ministries to help you problem solve to help you dream again to help you believe that anything is possible we want you to believe that you do not have to marry the first man you meet just to get someone to take care of you you do not have to live a life of drudgery you can educate yourself all you have to do is learn to read competently we want you to take a chance on yourself. Stop believing all the soothsayers around you that have never left the state in their lives. People who do not have courage to fly. People who only think of lying, cheating, and stealing. You can live an exciting life. All you have to do is believe that you can make your dreams come true. You do not have to go to bed with someone you despise day in and day out. You have the right to marry someone that you can talk to, to someone that believes in you and has faith in you as a human being. In other words, you do not have to settle for just anyone, but what you must do is strive toward your goal. You must be goal-oriented. You must organize yourself. You must be clear about what you want in life and why you want such a life. All of us are made up of dreams. As our dreams unfold in our lives, our spirit soars. Realizing our dreams becomes a problem because oftentimes we are beaten down by our friends and family. We are beaten down at school by people laughing at us because of our shoe size, our ear size, our breast size, the clothes we wear, etc. We are beaten down by people saying nothing will come of our lives. We are beaten down when our mothers and grandmothers constantly say that we're going to be just like our father, an inmate in prison. Many of us are also discouraged when our mothers are inattentive. She is wrapped up in her new boyfriend. But life anew is possible. It is my job to encourage you to go as far as you can dream and as far as your dreams can take you. It is my job to get you to believe in life again. I am sick and tired of people failing at life just because they are around negative speaking and negative acting people. Do not let the failure of other people make you lose confidence in yourself. Yes, you may be surrounded by poverty, but you must look for a way out. The book, If You Believe in God, You Do Not Belong in Prison, will help you. What you must do above all else is learn to read competently. You must read, read, and read. Anyone who laughs at you for reading, you need to leave that person alone. I do not care if it's your mother. Anyone who discourages you, you are to stop all association. Man is not different than plant. We need encouragement to grow as plants need water to thrive. You are to leave foolish, stupid people alone. Their ignorance will weigh you down or even get you killed. Sit down and think how you can avoid these people, especially if they're in your family. If you are overwhelmed with the tiring feeling that feels as if you're carrying a bag of stone around every morning when you get out of bed and think how you'll have to spend another living life you're not passionate about, the books I suggest are the perfect solution for your unique needs. Not only will we help you realize why these feelings overwhelm you, and what you can do to change it. But they will also teach you how to live a life of strength, courage, fearlessness, in order to realize all of your dreams. 
If you are lacking the attitude and psychology, proper resource or vision to make your dreams a reality, combined with dissatisfaction with the execution of your plans, but you remain firmly dedicated to making your ambition a reality and creating the life you deserve, you will certainly derive the most benefit from professional, incredible content within these books. Contents that will assist you in achieving the results that you are after. You are never to give up on yourself. Are you ready to leave your future to chance? Of course not. Take your life in your hand and learn all the necessary tools, mindset strategies used by the men and women of courage used in order to live the life of their dream. Change your life with our book starting today. Before we begin, we're going to take a few moments to collect ourselves and to relax before we engage into our discussion. What we need to do is to focus now on bringing positive energy into our lives and into the world. The energy that we project every day is the same energy that we get back. We have all seen those people that can walk into a room and they glow. People want to be around them. People feel better being in their presence. That's the energy that we need to create. And once we learn how to do this, our lives will be filled with greatness. We will attract that positive energy. And how we can do this is by changing our outlook, meeting every day with gratitude, thankfulness, optimism, and once you do this, you will see a change in yourself. I want you to take a moment and close your eyes. Think about everything positive in your life. Family, friends, a career, your faith. All of this is how you start your day. Every morning when you wake up, I want you to think about what is positive in your life. I want you to list ten reasons why your life is amazing. You will see the change. You will be changed. You will begin to attract life's blessings. Lead with gratitude. Be thankful and think positive. After three weeks of discussing sex trafficking, I feel we are at an impasse. We know to protect our children from traffickers, we must build their self-esteem. And we know self-esteem is predicated on awareness and knowledge. Being able to help yourself and improve your circumstance is predicated on the accumulation of knowledge. Let me say this again. We need knowledge to protect our children. We know this because we know self-esteem is predicated on awareness and knowledge and this knowledge is found in books. Therefore, in order to be a good parent, we have to take the knowledge found in books and apply it to our lives in order to protect our children. This is why today we're going to discuss reading and the word change, because it is only through reading that man acquires knowledge. So you can't help your children without knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better life you live. The less knowledge you have, the poorer life you live. Consequently, you must change and begin acquiring knowledge through reading. When you do not change, you die. The following is from a speech I gave at a church in Pontiac, Michigan in 2015. One of the most powerful things you can do in your life is change. When you attempt college, you change your study habits. You spend more time in the library and less time hanging out in the local mall. When you seek a mate, you change the way you do things at home to attract a mate. When you apply for a job, you put on your most pleasant face and try to answer all the questions with a smile. You make these changes to your performance because you want something. You want the college degree or you want the job or you want to marry. Either way, you change because 
Your desire motivates you to change. The change benefits you. The change leads you to success. In some cases, people make superficial changes just to get through the day. We appear pleasant at work when really we want to cry. We say thank you to customers when really we want to be home watching television. But we know we have to make these superficial changes so we can pay our bills. What many people working low-paying jobs do not realize is that their circumstances could change mightily if they just made one significant change. They need to modify their behavior. Their lives would improve enormously if they went home and instead of sitting in front of the television, they picked up a book and read it. Anyone thinking about improving their circumstance should look at the activity of reading. Anyone working a low-paying job or having problems at home or need help parenting their children or working on their marriage should consider the activity of reading. Reading is essential to life, yet it is the most neglected activity of man. Knowledge is as important to you as breathing. Your life depends on every breath you take, and your life also depends on the knowledge you accumulate to use to help you live your life. Do you know how many people die each year because they could not read? The disadvantage of not reading greatly affects people at work. They can't get promotions. They can't supervise or write reports correctly. They get stuck in their job when they cannot read. Also, thousand people every year die from prescription overdoses because they could not read their prescriptions pro properly. Most people, when asked by the doctor, do they understand something, they shake their head when truly they don't understand the instructions that the doctor is giving them. The people do not want to admit to themselves that they do not understand the meaning of the words that the doctor is speaking. Stop shaking your head when you do not understand words that people are using. You are not hurting anyone but yourself. And you're not concealing the fact that you are a poor reader or that you cannot read. Discussing reading is not easy because feelings get hurt. People are embarrassed, and not being able to read is viewed as a shortcoming. Yet, if you do not change, you will never grow. People become stronger if they grow through change. The purpose of church is not for anyone to come to have a good time, but it is for a place for you to gain knowledge so you can live a better Christian life. Church is a place for you to gain hope. A book is also a place where you can go to gain hope. Reading can make you stronger so you can win at life. You can win at life if you change by reading. You have a choice to make. You will either be ruled by your emotions or you will be ruled by your intellect. If you are sick and tired of being sick and tired of standing in unemployment lines, standing in welfare lines, eating government cheese, then you will listen to me and your brain and not your emotion. Christians are being defeated because of their emotions. People are losing children to drugs, sex, alcohol, and prison because of their emotion. The battle can be won, but you must have the courage to change and begin reading. People are not winning because they have not developed self-control. But you can defeat your emotions by reading and learning self-control. You are going to clean yourself up tonight of all your past deeds and leave here as a new person. So now we will begin. Reading is defined as the accumulation of knowledge. Reading is one of the processes by which human beings gather information for conducting their lives, which includes working and recreating. When this process is inhibited for whatever reason, the person cannot conduct his or her life successfully. The person meets with p bad results. When a person cannot read or does not read well, or she will live the life of a beggar, a cheat, a liar, or will end up in prison or the grave. They will never receive what God had in store for them. Reading is the most important human activity any man can participate in. When you ignore reading, you will have actually cut yourself off from other people around you. Our prisons are filled with people who do not know how to read. 
Our graveyards are filled with people who did not know how to read. You are not successful today because you cannot read or refuse to read. You continue to think you can conduct your life on the information you learned in high school. Your life is in ruin because you cannot read or do not read. Many of your children are in prison today because you did not read to them or teach them to read or teach them the importance of reading. Many of your children are dead because you did not read to them or teach them to read or teach them the importance of reading. Reading teaches discipline. Reading will tell you about another man's courage. Reading will tell you how to correct some of the mistakes in your life. Reading will help you solve some of life's problems. Reading will teach you how to find a job. Reading can help you learn a profession or a trade. Reading will help you improve your health. When you do not read, you depend on hitting the numbers to get you ahead in life. You turn to gambling thinking that if you wager enough money in a casino, that will help you survive. When you do not read, you go to the casino and wager your life savings trying to win big at the casino. When you do not read, you depend on prostituting yourself to get money. Try to attract a man with your butt or your breast size just to get money. When you do not read, you will go around the community looking for free food, free clothes, anything free that will help you. When you do not read, you bring men into your home who do not belong there telling your children to call him daddy. When you do not read or cannot read, you are walking around with no understanding of life. Let me say this again. When you do not read or cannot read, you are walking around without an understanding of life and you will meet with poor results. You will not pay your bills correctly. You will not purchase the right car. You will not know how to purchase a home. You will not know how to complete your income tax. You will waste money at the bar. You will purchase cheap items to booster your self-esteem. You will live in a poor neighborhood. You will not have a savings account. You will pay money for goods and services. You will pay more money for goods and services. You will be at the mercy of your fellow man. Your children may or may not go to college. Many of your girls will become pregnant and never graduate from high school. You will suffer from many illnesses brought on because of a poor diet or poor eating habits or tradition. You will become more and more adamant and shun change all because you do not have knowledge. Whereas you can t obtain this knowledge through reading. Hear me well, you are failing in life because you cannot read or you refuse to read or you refuse to learn to read competently. When you shun knowledge, you remain in the darkness. You will never reach the light and you will never see God. Your salvation depends on your ability to read. A person goes to a textbook to learn how to build a house or how to repair a car or how to learn how to purchase a computer or buy tires. If the person cannot read or cannot read competently, he or she cannot successfully reach their goal. They will not learn how to purchase a computer or purchase the correct tires. They can ask other people how to do these things, but they are at the mercy of their friends to tell them the truth. We read the Bible to find out what God has to say and to learn how we are supposed to conduct our lives. If we cannot read or if we cannot read competently, we cannot get the information we need from the Bible to manage our lives properly. A textbook or the Bible will not do us any good if we cannot read or if we cannot read competently. If you cannot read or you cannot read competently, the Bible is of no value to you. Listening to a sermon is not good enough. Going to Bible study and coming to church on Sunday, listening to a sermon is not enough for you to get the type of information you need to accomplish the task of learning what God wants you to do. If you take notes during Bible study, and you take notes during a sermon, you will be further ahead, but you are still dependent on another person interpreting Bible for you. You are depending 
on the integrity of the pastor to give you the right information. To solve this problem so that you will not be misled, you must learn to read and you must learn to read competently. Relying upon someone else to give you the correct information to conduct your life is extremely dangerous. You will meet with disastrous results if you continue in this path. Consider this. You rely upon your girlfriend for information. So she suggests to you to go to the bar to meet a man. In a few months you learn you have AIDS. All because you let your girlfriend tell you how to solve one of life's problems, loneliness. This is why you must pray and ask the Lord for guidance when you select a friend. You should also pray when you select a church leader. If you cannot read or you cannot read well, you are placing your life in the hands of that person guiding your church. Your eternal salvation depends on the honesty of your pastor. And believe me, all pastors are not honest. Many pastors are in church for the money. Now, for example, the word with the most drama in the Bible is the little word sin. Sin is what church is all about. Sin is what man is not supposed to do. Well, the problem with this word is it is not clearly defined in our minds. Sin to us is murder, adultery, fornication. Sin is also something else. Sin is any behavior that blocks the blessing of God. You didn't know that, did you? This is the most important definition of sin. It is any behavior that blocks the blessing of God. Why? Because we all want to be blessed by God. Correct. But on the other hand, God will bless anyone. So therefore, if you're not being blessed, you're doing something to prevent this blessing. So your behavior is blocking something. We all want God to bless us, right? We all want God to like us. We want God to be satisfied with our performance on the earth. We want God's blessing so we can live a good life. We want God's blessing so we can live a healthy and wealthy life and prosper on earth. No one wants to be poor, sick, and unhappy while living on earth. As Christians, we know our circumstances can change if we receive the blessing from God. Therefore, we strive to get God to like us so we can get this blessing. If you do not realize after reading your Bible there are specific sins that block the blessing of God, you have not read your Bible competently. Now, if you accept the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the edicts of God, then we know our lives can be filled with blessings. How many of you have read the Bible through at least once? How much of it did you remember? You recall most of what you read if you took notes and only if you review those notes daily. Your mind must be in the habit of taking in information. Your mind must be flexible. You must be in the habit of taking in information, processing this information, and evaluating this information. Now, when you read the book of Chronicles, what was the greatest lesson you learned? Did you realize God wrestled the kingdom from the various kings because the kings refused to abide by his laws? The kings sinned. They refused to be obedient. God gave the kings over to their enemies when the kings did not do as God told them. Were you impressed by this? Did you see yourself in these situations? Or did you quickly read this section telling yourself you understand what the book of Chronicles was all about? Did you see what it you did not do as God told you to do that God would wrestle your life away from you? Or did you think you could escape God's wrath by asking him to give you forgiveness, then continue doing as you please? Did you learn that disobedience is a sin? Did you realize that gossiping is a sin? That lying and cheating is a sin? Did you learn that God withdrew his protection from his people when people began having sex with women outside of marriage? Did you realize that when man did not repent of his sin, the results of the sin was built upon the person's children for the generations to come? There are more sins than just adultery and murder. When you read the Bible, 
do you see the association of what is said in the Bible to the way that you are conducting your life? God said for you to teach your children of him. Do you do this? Or is your son in prison because you were too busy working overtime to pay proper attention to what he was doing with his free time? How much overtime did you work to purchase your motorcycle or to pay for your girlfriend's new car working against the security of your children? How often did you stick your son in front of the television instead of giving him a book to read? How many times did you use the television as a babysitter so you could get your groove on? How often did you read to your son? How many books have you seen your son read? How many books are in your home? Did you repeatedly tell your son through example and through words that learning to read was his way out of poverty? That using a gun was not his way out of poverty? And did you tell him he did not have to learn how to play baseball or basketball or football to get out of poverty? Learning to read will get you out of poverty. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break. Anything that you want in this life can be obtained. You just need to believe. Believe in yourself. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are resilient. You are what we call the women of courage. And your time is now. There are no victims in this life. So I'm asking you, are you ready to make a change? Are you ready to fight for what you want? Are you ready to fight for your dreams? If you are, it starts now. This is the Women of Courage. You were built to push boundaries. You were designed to go beyond the breaking point. Somewhere down the line, you got comfortable. You decided settling was the best option. There are no comfort zones on the path to success. There is no wait once you see an opportunity. In this life, we don't walk around our fears. We grit our teeth, we run over those fears. So show me where you come from where risk is taken and the pride is won. We don't stop in this life. We don't quit in this life. We push until the day we die. Twice a month on Saturday, I meet with my listeners for a discussion about issues affecting women. Join us. For dates, times, and directions, you can reach us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Stop thinking there's nothing you can do to change the world. Your life is important. For more information on our books or subjects discussed, email us at Murdered Voices at gmail.com. Next, we're going to discuss the version Bringing Change into Your Life, Part 1 for Women. The male version for Bringing Change into Your Life will be covered during our next show. What is change? The word change is a noun. The Marian Dictionary defines change as the act, the process, or result of making differences. Synonyms of the word change are alterations, difference, modification, redoing, refashioning, 
remaking, remodeling, revamping, revise, revision, reworking, and variation. Words that are related to the word change are amendment, correction, rectification, conversion, de deformation, distortion, metamorphosis, mutation, transfiguration, transformation, fluctuation, oscillation, shift, displacement, replacement, substitution, adjustment, and modulation. So you see from the Marian Dictionary, change is transformation. A person goes from one state of rest or existence to another state of rest or existence. Presumably, if one has arms, legs, eyes, ears, all the rudiments for action, one can make a change. Actually, change does not involve the arms, legs, eyes, or ears. Change involves the mind. After a change has taken place, these appendages may be engaged, but they have very little to do with the actual change in behavior or thought pattern. Change involves developing a specific attitude, a specific way of talking, a specific way of walking, a specific way of viewing the world around you. Change involves seeing yourself at the helm, in command, self-visualization, telling yourself and others what you can do and what you will not do. Change involves concentration, determination, and willpower. It involves engaging the psychic, the real you. For change to take place, one must get in touch with their deep self. What I mean by the deep self, I mean the person that's talking to you. I mean your inner voice, the person we call the real you. Modifications are made internally, then changes will be seen by the world. Although the Marian Dictionary defines change, it does not tell you how to change. This is the life of the matter. The dictionary does not tell us how to get from point A to point B successfully. What we have to do to change a facet of the, our lives. How is change accomplished? We have to go somewhere else to find out how to make changes in our lives. In order to make a change, you need tools. You need a set of unique tools that when applied to your psyche, you will not only change your thought pattern, but you will remain motivated to change regardless of what is occurring around you. The tools you need to make changes to your personality are not physical to tools. They are metaphysical tools. Th this point should be made clear. It is the essence of change. Change must take place in the mind before that change can take place in reality. The tools you use to enforce change in your life are those tools developed during maturation, adversity, and contentment. Consequently, if you did not develop the necessary tools during these periods in your life, you will be deficient when it comes to making changes in your life. You may have to make adjustments in your life to implant the metaphysical tools you need so that you can make the required changes that you believe you need to make as you progress through life. Most assuredly, these tools will be implanted through reading and rehearsing. Repetition is vital when seeking to change resistant behaviors, behaviors that have plagued you for a long time. Just because you are deficient of certain metaphysical tools and did not develop these tools during maturation, learning is still possible. It just requires a desired, supportive, indomitable will. The world will tell you that there is no indomitable will. You must resign yourself to whatever comes your way. Eat, smoke, drink, and be happy. How can you make a difference? You are to finish your days filled with rage, thinking how life could be so unfair. If you look at the lives of Cardinal Mundelein and Nelson Mandela and other men and women cut from the same cloth, you will see Indominal wills are possible even in ordinary circumstances. 
Men and women become extraordinary by just saying no and digging in for the backlash. Imagine you are overweight. You have decided to lose weight. You are sitting at the lunch table and your girlfriend is eating a Twinkie. And she offers you one. What do you do? What tools do you use to remain on course to do what you said you were going to do regardless of what was occurring around you? One of the tools you may use in this situation is determination developed during adversity. You may call upon your determination to overcome your desire for the Twinkie. The determination will make you recall how you hate going to the dress store and not find anything to wear. Or how bad you feel when your husband takes you out to dinner and you are afraid to eat a baked potato. Another tool you may call upon is ostracism. You may desire to find an another best girlfriend, one who has your best interest at heart, a best girlfriend that will not offer you a Twinkie to eat. Now that we know a substantial part of change involves non-physical tools, we need to identify these tools so that they can be developed and used when we seek change. So our problem now turns into the problem of how do we identify and develop these non-physical tools and how can we keep them sharpened for use all the time. We discussed seven tools in chapter 13, Preventing Violence Against Women in the book, Volume 2, Part 2, Murder in the Family of the series, Do This in Remembrance of Me. I repeat, we discussed these tools in the book entitled, Murder in the Family, Volume 2, Part 2, Chapter 13. Please listen closely. The following is an excerpt from that chapter. If you do what you have always done, you will always be what you've always been. That is a quote from Pastor T.D. Jakes. I will repeat it. If you do what you have always done, you will always be what you've always been. Women must change. Yes, there are particular areas where violence will be reduced, but these areas are not the focus of what we're saying. What we are saying is women must change. Please repeat the quote of T.G. Jakes. If you do what you've always done, you will always be what you've always been. Say it again. If you do what you've always done, you will always be what you've always been. Say it again. If you do what you've always done, you will always be what you've always been. Now substitute the word I for the word you in the quote. If I do what I've always done, I will always be what I've always been. Do you see what you're saying? Say it again. If I do what I've always done, I will always be what I've always been. We are saying women can reduce the violence against women by 30% if women change. We're not saying women must make a particular change. We are saying women must change. In order to prevent violence against women, women must change. Women must evolve. Now, many of you are saying this statement is ludicrous. How can we change? What are we to change? A person cannot change unless he or she knows what they're going to change about themselves. These people sound stupid. They say 30% of the violence against women can be reduced if women change, but they don't say what area women are to change. We say women must change. We can provide you with a list of situations that will be improved when you change, but these situations will be the result of your change. If we say to you, you must lose weight, you would be acceptable because you feel weight is one of your problems you have. If we say you need to wear more makeup, that would be also acceptable because you feel you could be more attractive if you were using makeup. But when we say you must change, you become agitated. You are not comfortable. You are in unfamiliar territory. The scope is too broad. 
you do not feel sure of yourself. Things must stay the same, just with a little modification. To go beyond normal modification makes you uncomfortable. Yet we say women must change. Why? Because women have been manipulated for centuries to act against themselves. I will say it again. Women have been manipulated for centuries to act against themselves. Women advocate for laws and agree to rules that not only injure them and their daughters, but future generations of women, which includes their granddaughters. Women were the torchbearers for prohibition. But they remain, even until today, silent on issues of rape and incest in the home. If women manage to speak of rape, they speak of rape in teeny tiny voices, void of anger or the desire for retribution or revenge. Why not say when you speak of rape, regardless of what God says, I would like to kill the bastard who raped me and damn his soul to hell. The behavior of women has been prescribed for years. Women have been told what to do and what not to do, and they've been following these directions for centuries. Women must recognize that they, along with the Negro, have been conditioned to conform and to do what they have been told to do based on someone else's agenda. Please note, I did not use the word black because the black person does not accept laws or rules to act against himself. The black person recognizes it is the year of 2018 and it is damn well time for change. I am going to pause for a second to take a short break. This right here, this is the moment right before the day starts when you get to look in the mirror and tell yourself who you are. Now you've been through some dark days, I believe that. But all that pain and struggle, that made the person you're looking at now. So when you walk out of these doors today, I need you to believe in yourself. I need you to believe you are the strongest person walking this planet. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know the grind it took for you to be here. So when you leave here today, I need you to show them. If you are in trouble and you think there is no way out, I think you should listen to me. I think what you should do is purchase three pocket books and read these books throughout the day. The books need to be read over and over again. These books will help you feel better and manage your life. This is not a sales pitch. These three books will help you. The titles of the books are Know Your Enemy, A Christian is Never Desperate, and The Trial of the Mind. These books are filled with information to help you face the trials of the day. You can carry these books in your purse or your breast pocket and read them when you need help. These books were written to show you how to develop and to protect your mind and how to elevate your self-esteem. There are moments in life when we all have to be encouraged to make it through the day. We have problems at work. We have problems with our spouses. We have problems with our children. We have problems with our bills. These situations and problems weigh us down to where we do not know which way to turn or which way to go. Sometimes we just want to quit. These books will help you. You will be encouraged. Drinking is not the answer, 
and smoking a joint of marijuana before going to work is not the answer. More and more women are now being cited for DWIs and entering prison on drug charges and their children are thrown into foster care. Up these books and read them over and over again until your continence returns, until you feel the joy of life again. There is a passage in the book, A Christian is Never Desperate, and I think that passage will help you. It helped me when I was homeless. Tell yourself, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel said. Talk to the Lord. Notice the power in this phrase when I say, this is what the, the Lord God of Israel said. Remember as a child when you got in trouble and you told someone, that my mama is going to fix this for me or my father's going to get you. You felt better after saying that, right? Because someone else was going to step in and help. You believed that your father was going to help you or you believed that your mother was going to help you. Those thoughts gave you encouragement. These books were designed as sources for you to use to give yourself encouragement, refreshment and strength to fight the daily battles of survival. These books are a reminder that you can win at life. Life is not something that you suffer through and then die. Life is a passage of time to be lived in joy and happiness with God at the helm. These devotionals will help keep you mindful of your responsibility to God, your responsibility to yourself, and your responsibility to your family. Keep one of these books with you at all times. You will find referencing scripture will help strengthen your mind. These scriptures will reinforce your faith to help sustain you. When you feel panicky or when worry overcomes you at work, go into the bathroom and repeat one of these scriptures to yourself out loud. These scriptures will fortify you. Someday you will be overcome with fear thinking nothing will get you out of the situation you are in. This is not true. Change can come into your life, but you must examine your life and decide what you want to change, then plan for these changes. You must learn to take one day at a time. This will lower your anxiety. People lose control of their emotions because they keep jumping ahead in their minds. They forecast gloom and doom not realizing that most of what they think will happen never happens. You must master taking one day at a time. When you take one day at a time, you will begin to look forward to incremental change, small changes. You must learn to believe in change. Warriors fear or feed off of their anxiety by thinking nothing will change. They expect nothing, so they get nothing. Worry will kill you. Fear will kill you, and avoidance will kill you. You can develop the courage to save yourself and your children by changing. Just as you learn to worry, you can learn not to worry. The genesis of worry is fear. You can learn how not to be afraid just as you learn to be afraid. Learn to recognize when you are fearful and learn to fight against fear. It is important that you start walking with God. It is important that you read, study, and meditate so that in times of trouble, you will not falter but gird your loin and stand for right and not evil. Worrying lowers your expectations for the future. If you have a God, why do you have low expectations for your life? Think about what I just said. If you have a God, why do you have low expectations for your life? You have low expectations for your life because of the way you think. You do really do not believe. You want to believe what you do not believe. Say, I have a God, then stand up. This is what Christians are called to do. Change thinking, change life. Failure in life is often due to a person's refusal to change and their refusal to confront his or her fears. Rather than picking up a book and learning something new, the person keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different results. 
there are women who are told the best way to get a man is to have a child. Then the man will marry you. The first time the woman has a child, the man does not marry her. She tr tries a technique again with a new man. She gets pregnant, and for the second time she has a child, and the man does not marry her. She tries a technique a third time. She has not learned. How many abortions are you going to have? Rather than changing herself, she keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. Now she has a house full of children, but no husband. Rather than picking up a book and learning how other people solve the same problem, she does not change. She fails to realize there is more than one way to solve the problem, and she can learn this way and gain the information through reading. This woman has failed to realize she has made a faulty assumption. Having a baby leads to marriage. Do not be one of these people. Pick up a book and try something new. My books provide a broad discussion of many subjects that affects one's life. Read, learn, then change. Part of change is stop lying to yourself. Stop walking around pretending everything in your life is okay. Stop acting as if you are in control, piling up more and more debt, avoiding your mortgage payments to pretend you're wealthy, and stop depending on the conversation you are having with your best friend. You must sit down and make a clear assessment of your circumstances and decide what needs to be changed in your life. Make a plan for these changes, then act. Take a deep breath and admit to yourself that you have problems. Admit you made mistakes with your children. Now tell yourself you are determined to change your circumstances. You are not going to spend another second in a life that you do not want. And please learn to keep your mouth shut. What you may not realize is your friends and family may not want you to change or to do better than they are doing. This is why you should shut up and don't tell anyone what you are trying to do. Doubt is a contagion. It is a fear conveyed by friends and family, usually early in life. Then this doubt is developed into a habit. Once, what some people do not realize is that their friends and family members may have a low expectation in life and they are incapable of encouraging themselves or you. They practice a mode of living called avoidance. They walk around pretending. They live a life of bitterness and die with hatred in their heart for themselves, those around them, and God. Your self-image is determined during maturation, and it is based on the encouragement and love given to you by your parents or the disdain shown by others. When your boyfriend demands that you prove your love by selling your body or giving him money while your children needs go unmet you need to change you are dealing with an animal and you need to change and leave him alone and start life anew any man that tells you that you should give him your money is telling you that he thinks you're stupid your boyfriend is a small time pimp who lacks the skill to compete in an open job market he has no talents and lacks the imagination to develop himself. So you and other women are his prey. He knows your lack of self-esteem, so he impregnates you with fear to get you to comply. Why have you let love become so important to you that you shame yourself? Change. Change is not an easy process. It hurts. You will be confused. You will be scared and you will be weary. Things will go wrong, but you must be determined to claim your life regardless of your age. Two problems cause women to become defeated in life. Their self-image and their self-doubt. Do not grow old being bitter, filled with hate, where you envy the young and it turns you into a monster. Do not be afraid that you will live a life of despair. You must learn to live a life of expectations, not despair. Evaluate your life. 
evaluate the people you confide in evaluate then make plans then act you will be alone but being alone is better than being part of a herd going nowhere granted you may not know what to do to change your life but one thing is certain if you do not step out and seek knowledge through reading you will never live a fulfilling life your children will benefit from your diligence you believe what you what you read in the magazine when you change your hairdo to attract a man why not believe in me when I say my books will help you make a permanent change in your life read learn then change change may be difficult but you can do it do not let your dreams turn to fantasies providing you with no substance for life just stand up a storm always exposes the weakest area in your life that is the area you must change send $35 to women and children restoration ministry P.O. Box 7267 Ann Arbor Michigan 48107 make certain you send us a correct shipping address your books will be shipped to you these books will make a great gift for someone that you love and do not forget join us on Saturday email me for time and location at murdered voices at gmail.com and join us on Saturday remember if you do not want your children defined by poverty and ignorance you need to change otherwise prison or prostitution awaits them of Courage Show broadcast every Friday from 3 to 4 p.m. and every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. Please remember if you are not in your car or near radio during our broadcast, we can be seen and heard on your computer if you go to TV33WHPR.com. Again, TV33WHPR.com. We can also be heard on your phone if you download the free app WHPR TV Detroit Live or listen to us on Roku at WHPR TV Detroit Live 88.1 FM. If you miss one of our broadcasts, you can view our archive on YouTube at the Touch by the Light publishing channel twice a month. On Saturday, I meet with my listeners for a discussion about issues affecting women. Please join us. For dates, times, and directions, you can reach us at murderedvoices at gmail.com. Thank you for listening to Women of Courage, and have a great day.